Teague, if you can't get excited about wrestling and tipping Jim tonight, what can you get excited about, man? Yeah, it was awesome. That's an awesome duel. Okay. I, I thought I almost saw a battle royale between the coaches. What was going on there, man? Uh, it was... You know, it, it was the last match. Everybody knew that the that the whole duel was on the line, and uh, our athlete is running a bar. He, he's got a straight bar from the wrist, like snow plow brings it up. Starts to take the guy over, and from my angle, the referee is watching the match. His face is towards me. CD Mock is out, almost on top of the athletes, but the one referee, his back is to him. So, my. My thoughts on it are, as they're blowing the whistle to stop it, I'm going to get out there. If CD goes to grab my athlete, which he probably wouldn't have done, but if he was going to, I'm going to be in that mix also. And we both get penalized a point. That's the rule. We shouldn't be out there on the mat. But when it's, when it's that heated and it's, everything's on the line, I'm, I'm getting behind my guys regardless of the situation. Even if I'm going to lose a team point, I'm, I'm stepping up to back up my team. What what do you guys tell uh, you know Fleming when he goes out there and he just absolutely beats up on Burns? You know, what do you tell him? That's a secret, but um, <laughs> you don't have to tell me. That's no, fine. He, uh, he Fleming, he's he's just a different cat. You know, you got to talk to him on his level and fire him up in a way that that he's going to get fired up. He's not like he's not a rah rah type of guy. What you say. James, your match could mean a lot to the team. He doesn't want to hear that. He wants to hear. He wants to get fired up. He he's going out to a fight, and literally, it's like you're in a parking lot and you're getting James ready to go into a fist fight. And when he goes out to wrestle, he doesn't go out to wrestle. He goes out to dominate. He wants to. He wants to dominate every person he gets on top of. Is he a program changer? Yeah, totally. He's he's a, uh, you know, at this point in time. He's got the mentality that we've been preaching. Uh, and not that there's other guys that haven't been program changers for us, but you know, ultimately I think four or five years from now when we look back at Clarion and say, what was that, the true turning point of the program? It was when you brought in a, a guy like Fleming that his goal is to get to the top of the podium. Everyone else, move out of the way. doesn't matter if you're returning national champ, returning All-American. He's pushing you out of the way. He wants to get on the top. Uh, I asked him if he thinks people are going to be scouting what he's doing on top. And uh, what I've heard before from people is people are so good at something, you know it's coming, but you can't stop it. Do you think that he's like one of those guys almost? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was blessed to be able to, to go and wrestle at Oklahoma State under John Smith three years after John got out of international wrestling. And when we would go overseas and you would talk to, to Russians or you'd talk to Bulgarians, you'd talk to the people that had to compete against him, you couldn't stop John Smith's low single. They knew it was coming. Everyone tried to come up with a defense for it. They couldn't stop it. And, and he, he's, he's one of, of many. You know, There's been a lot of guys that have come along in our sport, and they developed that one thing that nobody seems to be able to stop. Um, as for uh, the, the coaches that we're going up against, um, they, they all, initially at the beginning of this year, the argument was he's choking, he's choking, he's choking. Now that coaches realize when their guys get up, None of, none of the wrestlers are grabbing their throat. Like, They're grabbing I, I their face, I think. They're grabbing their neck like, holy shit, <laughs> you know? And so now the, the arguments from opposing coaches have changed. They went from he's choking to now they're saying he's stalling on top. We had, we had 15 back points on the board tonight, and the opposing coaches are yelling he's stalling on top in the third period. So the the... What, we, what we're going to face from opposing coaches and, and, and opponents to try and stop what he's doing, uh, we just he needs to keep developing. James is the type of kid that he's, he's thinking two moves ahead. And right now he's trying to figure out what, do I, what can I add to my offense on my feet that's going to get me on top. In high school, he relied on getting taken down, and then he, would, he was real slippery on bottom. He would s slip the guys out. He would come up on top, and then he would start working his offense on top. Now he wants to develop an offense on his feet that he can take people down and then dominate on top. And that's what good wrestlers do. They keep, they're always tweaking their game. And right now he's definitely tweaking his game. He's trying to figure out what can I do on my feet that's going to get me to my dominant position. Whether it be at North Allegheny, Oklahoma State, all, you know, all the places you've been, have you ever seen anyone score near falls like this guy does? Um... I wasn't, I wasn't there. I came in right after, but Jesse Jansen, when Jesse was at Harvard and he was on top, I watched Jesse as an opponent coach, 
and that dude was on fire. The year he won the Nationals, he racked up near fall points like Snapper's doing right now. Uh, I think if you go back in time, you got to go back to a guy like Gene Mills, you know, where Mills could pick top and uh, he could be losing three to two going into the third period and win, you know, eighteen to three. Um, so there's been guys that have come along in the sport and done that. It's special when you get to see them and you get to say, there's people that are going to leave our gym tonight, and in 20 years they're going to say, I remember watching him wrestle. I remember watching Fleming wrestle. I remember watching Wade Chalice in Tip and Jim. I remember watching Kurt Angle in Tip and Jim. That's the type of thing that we're seeing right now, and it's special. It's kind of cool. All right. Uh, what do you tell Hadley after he gets a huge pin like that? We can't let, our, we can't let this get us too high. You know, you can't let your highs get you too high. You can't let your lows get you too low. Um, for him to be able to go out, and honestly, I, when when that match started from a coaching standpoint, I thought Hadley was going to beat him just head-to-head -head because Hadley was on tonight. He's coming off on a, ro a tough road trip. They come all the way up to Edinburgh. He has a tough match last night. Comes out today. doesn't Didn't look really good against Cleveland State. And just the way Hadley's been handling his weight management, his training right now, he's peaking at the right time. I thought we had the upper hand in that duel, just had that head-to-head -head matchup. They go through that scramble position, of which Hadley went offensive and was finding the way to score out of there and gets him on his back. I didn't think the referee was going to call it. Because he had him pinned two times. That's what I thought. But, you know, when, when you're going up against a guy like that, you got to clearly have them pinned for the referee to call it. But the referee called it, so kudos to him comes down to Nick Milano. He's got a losing record. He's kind of a guy who it seems like I watched him against Penn. He kind of like didn't, looked like he didn't have it, but you know, today he had it, man. He beat two quality opponents, Michaels, yeah. Cleveland State, and then he, and then he, he comes up big against uh, against uh, you know North Carolina. What do you say to him? Uh, just my message to Nick is that's what you're capable of. That's what you're capable of every weekend. Uh, he's a true freshman. A lot of these guys that we're talking about in our lineup are true freshmen. And uh, he, he's had ups and downs. He started the year out very well. Um, he had a tough time midseason because he was still wrestling a high school style. And even right now, he still has a tendency to go to fall back into his high school style. He's got a very good offensive attack on his feet. Um, very explosive. He can move and create angles that not a lot of guys can. Right now, it's getting him to believe that he can because when he hit his down point in the season, it was almost like we were going to plateau out, and he was. It looked like he was going to throw in the towel. But you know, just trying to get him refocused and believe in himself. And look at today on paper, he was supposed to go zero and two, and he not only comes out two and zero today, but he comes out the hero of the day. So that's hopefully the the shot of adrenaline he needs, or the or the shot of confidence that he needs to get him ready for EWLs and hopefully get out to the Nationals. All right, last thing, I'll let you off the hook. Who gave you the shiner? Um, we had a huge snowfall last weekend, and we got home from a long road trip, and my wife's got four kids, and she was like, if you don't get this driveway clean because I can't get in and out of the driveway, you're going to pay for it. So <laughs> she decked me. No, we were, we were in practice on Wednesday, and uh, our 41-pounder, we were going through a long scrap. We'd been wrestling live for a little bit, and um, the same forty-one pounder who cut his mustache. Yeah, up. who had the sweet stash, and he bagged it. So uh, we we're a little upset about that. But and I'm left with nothing here. You still look sweet. You got to keep it. Um, he uh, he had he actually had me on my back. Really? I start to come out. I end up on top for a split second. He goes to cut away, and we create a little bit of distance. He was cutting hard into me. I was shooting into the takedown at the point of his elbow. Bam. I mean, when it hit, I heard a pop, and I thought I broke my cheekbone. So the orbital socket bone. Yeah, I was nervous there for a second. At that, I couldn't open my jaw. It was it was rough, but they. I went over, got our X-rays. Everything's fine. It just looks ugly right now. All right. Hey, thanks for the time. Thanks for the new shirt. I got the same shirt on as you. I'll probably be changing it if uh, we go to get wings or something. So right. hey, keep keep this up. Keep it on the upswing. All right. Yeah, we're trying, man. Uh, you're doing. We're trying.